Thus far, we've talked about how to do translation, but how do you know if you've created a good translation? Like most of the material I'm presenting about machine translation, I'm building off of materials from Philip Kuhn, uh, who's faculty down the road at Hopkins. Like many generation tasks, what's really hard is that there are many right answers to a translation. Here are 10 reasonable translations of just a single sentence, and a not very complicated sentence at that. But then there are infinitely many wrong answers, so how can you tell the good ones from the bad ones? Let's say that you want to translate the beginning of the Gospel according to John. We're going to consider two axes. Does the translation sound good? And does it convey the original meaning? If you just got gibberish like this, it doesn't sound good, nor does it get the message across. This gets the message across, but it's kind of hard to understand. This sounds great, but it's actually lyrics from Coldplay. So that's not a good biblical translation either. What we want from our translations are the translations that maintain the essential meaning and also sound good. So the most obvious way you can check to see if you have a good translation is to ask people who are bilingual in the two languages, and this is the gold standard, does this make sense and does it sound good to you? And these two metrics are called adequacy and fluency. But like with a lot of the metrics that we've talked about derived from humans, you can't really backpropagate through somebody's opinion. So computer programmers want to have automatic metrics to see if they got a good translation. The starting point is, given some reference translations, just check precision and recall of the individual words. Precision is counting up all the words that you generated, how many are in the reference, and recall is counting up all the words in the reference, how many did you generate. But this isn't perfect, it ignores word order. And it doesn't really allow for paraphrases. You need to get every word exactly right. Now, if you've taken a computational biology course or a theory course, another obvious solution comes immediately to mind. Let's use edit distance. How many substitutions, insertions, or deletions does it take to modify the reference to get to the generated translation? This gets a little more complicated because you need to build a dynamic programming table to compute the minimum number of edits, but this does account for word order. And because we're at Maryland, I'm contractually obligated to mention some of Maryland's early contributions to this metric called Translation Edit Rate Tur and Translation Edit Rate Plus Tur P. Go Terps! This took the basic error rate and gave it a copy-paste key. So you could do things like move a prepositional phrase around without paying a huge price. And it also accounts for different word forms. For example, giving credit to a reference that says purplish and a translation that says somewhat purple. So let's move on from error rate and precision. Do you recall the most famous metric of all? It is, of course, bleu, French for blue. As always, Please note any bad French pronunciations in the comment. It boosts engagement. BLUE stands for Bilingual Evaluation Understudy. This goes through for different ingram links and checks to see if they're in the translation reference. And then it takes the geometric mean of all of those precisions. There's also a brevity penalty because you could game this metric by just finding one correct ingram of the maximum length and outputting that and nothing else. So you also want to match the length of the reference sentence. So let's take a look at an example again, borrowed from Philip Kuhn. In this example, system A gets quite a few individual words right, less than half of the bigrams, but gets an overall blue score of zero because it didn't get any of the larger ingrams. But remember that the name of this metric in its long form is bilingual evaluation understudy. So it's supposed to fill in for the human evaluations that are, don't forget, the gold standard. So while you can get a good correlation on systems, Ehud Ryder showed that the correlation for individual examples is quite a bit lower. But of course, if you get the exact translation right, you do get a really good score, but other than those outliers, there's not a great correlation here. So blue is the biggest evaluation metric for machine translation. What are the pros and cons? So clearly it's fast and cheap, and it works really well if you have multiple references, which is particularly important for modern 
machine translation systems. And it does seem to correlate relatively well with human judgments at the system level. But on the other hand, you really can't depend on Blue to tell you which individual translations are good. It's highly sensitive to outliers and it doesn't do a good job of allowing for paraphrases or synonyms, which can be a part of a good translation. And it works for some languages better than others. It's highly word-centric, which works well for Western European languages, but less well for highly morphologically rich languages or character-based languages. Those issues and more are covered in the great paper Tangled Up in Blue, a play on the Bob Dylan song of the same name. Tangled up in blue. But with the English spelling. Although with Bob Dylan you can never really tell. There are lots of great suggestions in this paper, but one of their suggestions is to focus on metrics like yisu, which among other things allows for using whatever resources are available for a language, semantic parses, bilingual word embeddings, to better capture things like character level effects and who did what to whom, alongside reasonable paraphrases that we've talked about before. But in my opinion, I think we should focus more on task-centric evaluations. Machine translation is used for different applications. And one application might need a different evaluation from another. So if you care about just extracting a single answer to a question, you should probably evaluate downstream question answering instead of the raw translations. If you care about understanding the relationships between entities, an information extraction evaluation might be better. And if you care about sense making, you might not care so much about the nuance of individual sentences so long as the themes line up across languages. And I think that evaluation for machine translation specifically and generation broadly is going to be a major opportunity for innovation in natural language processing. The advent of new neural methods offers methods that can generate a really fluent output and can draw on a lot of information. But the evaluation techniques that got us out of the AI winter may not be enough to deal with the flexibility of these newer neural models. And I don't think they can match how translation systems are actually used. So as we untangle ourselves from blue, since the times they are a change in, it may be the end of the line for old evaluation metrics. Maybe you'll be the one to come up with a new evaluation metric for MT, and I won't be alone anymore. This is just one video from a course that I'm teaching. If you want to get the whole context, check out the course webpage linked below. There you can find all of the videos in the right order. YouTube likes to show you older videos out of order, homeworks, exercises, and recommended readings. And if you want to help other people find videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe to provide a big gradient to the algorithm.